Hi everyone, my name is Eric Whitkop. I am a DOD SE um, over at Palo Alto Networks and today we're talking about the Apache Log4j vulnerability that is all over the internet. Uh, the problem with this vulnerability is that it's a remote code execution, what's called an RCE, meaning that uh, you know any system within the network that is vulnerable to it could reach out uh, and do a callback to uh, a listening, uh, you know, reverse shell kind of scenario or, or worse, who knows, right? Um, so whenever you have an RCE, it's very problematic and it gets everyone's attention. A little joke. My buddy Steve Boyle sent me this. I had to throw it in there. I love that we now meme our phones. Um, shout outs. Uh, this guy, Christoph D in GitHub, he's the one that built a lot of the uh, POC code. Big thanks to him, we always give credit. And there's a number of links here where we talk about uh, some of our products that can help defend against the Log4j vuln. Prisma Cloud Compute can protect your workloads and hosts. We have, uh, of course, our next-gen firewall. We have Expanse. We have another, uh, a couple of options. So uh, we'll get into that. But first, we're gonna do the demo. Get ready. So the whole purpose of this JNDI is that you could enrich your logs. So if you had a username of eWitcop and, and you're running Log4j, you could go out and uh, do an LDAP query and get my email address and physical address and really add a bunch more context to each log. Only problem is, do you trust that remote LDAP server? And what if they were to point it somewhere else? That would be bad. And that's what's happening here. So here's my attacker down at the bottom in the, the black window with the green font. Um, on the top left here is the vulnerable application. This is the Spring Boot that Christoph D built. And then we have on the right, we have the evil LDAP in the, in the blue window. And then down in the bottom right hand corner in the green window, the dark green background is my Netcat listener waiting for a shell to pop in, right? So let's go ahead and execute it. So I'm gonna point this curl at my vulnerable web server at the IP address of 240. I've, I've base64 encoded my command. My command says netcat, the IP address of this uh, Kali Linux, and then TCP port 5555. So I'm not gonna decode that, but if you wanna decode it in your spare time, go for it. Uh, but that's what, it, it, that's what this is. The reason we base64 is so that we can uh, you know, obfuscate the traffic, of course, but also uh, make sure that we don't have any new lines, semicolons, something that might interrupt the entire string from being interpreted on the remote end, right? So we love to base64 whenever we can. So let's go ahead and execute it. Boom, right? You can see right here, as soon as you see this in Netcat, it's like the greatest thing. So, yep, I got... So the first thing we do is we uh, improve our shell. And I am in, this is a container. So this Spring Boot thing is a container. So I don't have access to the actual host. Um, this is a, the you know Etsy pass from the container itself. But uh, I'd have to break out of the container and keep going with my attack. But don't understand that Log4j is not just in containers. It's on hosts. It's everywhere. It's an elastic. That's why the, the attack surface is so wide and why this is so important to address. For Prisma Cloud Compute customers, you should be running the latest and greatest, which is uh, 525 Update 2. And then you're going to go ahead and add these custom rules, which you can tell are just regexes looking for that string. Okay. Um, and if you do that, you'll be able to protect yourself at runtime, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've configured my Prisma Cloud Compute to look for that regex pattern with the uh, JNDI that we talked about. And if I go ahead and launch this, I'm, I'm set to alert only. I'm not blocking it yet. You can see I still got my shell, my reverse shell, right? But look at the 102, ready? I can just keep running it. And it's near real time. It's pretty impressive, actually. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to block it. Okay, now we're gonna change the rule to block. So now let's retest now that we're in block mode and see what happens. Notice there's no re reverse shell over here on the, on the netcat listener on Kali. And we saw that the request uh, violates the rules and uh, we stopped it in its tracks.
We like, we like this. Now a few closing notes. Of course our next gen firewall has an IPS functionality where we can actually uh, stop this stuff right in its tracks, assuming you have SSL decryption turned on, which is always key, right? Uh, but we have another product too called Expanse, which is an attack surface management platform. Scanning, looking for unknown and known assets. Furthermore, in terms of Log4j, we can actually help detect where you're vulnerable with Expanse. Uh, with the right paperwork and the right uh, NDAs in place and, uh, you know, permission, of course, we can help find where there are certain uh, JNDI lookups coming out of your network, right? Because we can control the payload of our probe, we can see the return traffic. And if I see return traffic, that means that somebody answered, right? So we have a whole suite of things that we can do around Expanse. Just ask your friendly Palo Alto uh, systems engineer and they'll be happy to show you what it would look like. And then uh, Godspeed. Thank you, everyone.